Johannesburg Mayor Mpopalatse, together with the Anglican Church, have announced various events around the city in honor of the late Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu. The Anglican Church and the city of Johannesburg said that they would be working together to ensure that the late Archbishop will be celebrated by Johannesburgers. And we're now joined by Anglican Dean of Johannesburg, Reverend Kolani Luati, who joins us more on the series of events planned out for this week. Reverend, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to Morning Live. Morning. Good morning. It is a pleasure, yes. Well, Reverend, just take us through the series of events that have been planned in honor uh, of uh, the late Archbishop. Uh, indeed, of, of course, as we celebrate the life of a, a man of his stature who not only was a cleric, but was a global icon. And, and as we know that Johannesburg was one of the cities where he served at the cathedral in at St. Mary's. Um, and served as a bishop and many other um, aspects within the Johannesburg. So the, the event that will continue to today, um, at 12 midday, we will gather outside his house in Soweto for midday prayers um, together with other religious leaders um, and more so together with the community of Soweto as we pray and celebrate his life. That will be midday today. And then in the evening, of course, we will continue with the evening prayer at St. Mary's Cathedral in Johannesburg in Wandra Street, um, a, a tradition that was uh, really dear to Archbishop Desmond Tutu um, as he committed himself on a daily basis to prayer, uh, soaking himself with evening and, and, and morning prayer. So tomorrow, then we will have a memorial service, which will be the, the key event within, within Johannesburg. Um, at 11 o'clock at St. Mary's Cathedral, where we would be celebrating his life um, as a community of the church, faith community, the community of Johannesburg. Of course, this is done um, in partnership together with the city of Johannesburg, who have been excellent in actually providing support. Um, and then the service will start at 11 a.m. tomorrow. And we are, we are urging people in terms of parking to park at the Metro Center in Bramfontein, and then they will be um, and they will be they will be provided transport to and from um, the cathedral itself. And then on Friday, of course, um, at 9 a.m. there will be a service at Holy Cross in Orlando West, um, near to Desmond Tutu's home where he actually lived. And these all events are aimed at celebrating his legacy, celebrating his contribution, but making sure that we, as the people of God, continue to actually uh, make his legacy a living reality. Well, is there a limit as to the number of uh, people that will be accommodated at uh, St. Mary's? I mean, I'm asking this, that lest people uh, start flocking in only to find that uh, they are now over the limit. Of course, we will be, we will be adhering to the COVID protocols and uh, we will be actually um, using the venue to uh, at least 50% capacity, uh, you know, because of COVID protocols, we can fill the venue as per the normal numbers of the cathedral. And that has been taken into consideration in, in, in terms of planning, yes. And as a result of the restrictions and li the limitations about the numbers, there are those, of course, who would love to be a part of the service, but because of, uh, you know, the li limitation of the numbers, they might not be able to. But uh, is there a, a likelihood, perhaps, that this event will be live streamed for those who will not be able to attend? Yes, indeed. <clears throat> we, we are planning that events be live streamed through the city social platforms, the city of Johannesburg, but also it will be live streamed through the cathedral Facebook of the Cathedral of St. Mary's Facebook. Um, we, we were hoping as well that the service could also be televised so, so that it has easy reach for those members of our community who do not have access to social media platforms. So we have, we're hoping in partnership with you as the media, we'll be able to reach as many people as actually possible. But also in partnership with the city, we have also set up um, a system through the city platforms where people can send messages. You know, because of COVID, before we would sign what we call a, a burial registers or commemoration or condolence books for people to come in. Mm -hmm. But um, what we've created because of COVID is a platform through the city for people to send their messages to, to, of condolence to the, to the family. Uh, but also we provided platform at the cathedral for people to be able to come and actually put wreaths there. But also there'll be a platform in Soweto at the Tutu House for people who'd like to come and put wreaths. 
to come and put them. The city, together with the church, have made arrangements to actually attend and actually cover, cover that as well. Well, Reverend, we know that the St. Mary's Church is very, you know, holds so much significance to uh, the late Archbishop because that's where he served as a dean at some point. Just, uh, just take us briefly, you know, through the relationship or the connection that uh, the Archbishop had with St. Mary's Church. In, in, indeed, it, he had a very close and a very dear relationship. In fact, um, St. St. Mary's Cathedral was close to his heart and dear to him. Um, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, before he served as dean there, he was actually ordained in that cathedral as a deacon, mm -hmm. and he was also ordained in that cathedral as a priest, and further he was installed as the dean of Johannesburg, and subsequently he was consecrated and enthroned in that cathedral as the bishop of Johannesburg. Um, and you would see that it is a, it, it is a church that has a very close to his heart and has very great significance to actually to him. But more so, it is in this church, in this cathedral, where Desmond Tutu stood in that pulpit and challenged the injustices of the world. It is in this cathedral where his ministry and his mission and his prophetic ministry actually was the platform for him to begin it and to continue to, to challenge it. So it has been very instrumental in his formation it has been very instrumental in his life and ministry, not only as a bishop, but as a priest, but before that, as a lay person within the Church of God. We saw Johannesburg Mayor Dr. Mpopalatse, uh, you know, saying that uh, they are also looking into renaming the, the precinct around St. Mary's Cathedral after Desmond Tutu. Uh, do we know at this point uh, if negotiations have already started and uh, if the church has been involved? Yes, indeed. In fact, this is the proposal that was put forward by the church itself to the city. Um, and I do need to put it, it, it was not put now. This proposal has been put about four years ago to the city. Okay. But for some reason, you know, it has not been implemented. For some reason, it was slow to be implemented. But we are happy that uh, now it seems to be actually gaining momentum. Um, because we, we were saying to the city from a long time ago, Johannesburg, which is the city where the Archbishop Desmond Tutu ministered, seems to be the only city in the world that has not honored him as an icon. And we said to, to the city at, at the time, um, seen because his ministry was surrounded and critical around that cathedral, it would be ideal to name that precinct Archbishop Desmond Tutu precinct. And in that plan that we presented to the city, we are even considering a number of other suggestions. Mm. But at the core of this suggestion is to try and transform those surroundings. Because as you know, those surroundings are very hurting, are very despicable. But we are glad that now we are beginning to take action and do something. So we are in conversation with the city, or we have been in conversation with the city, even with the previous mayor. We have been in conversation with them, but we're glad that now it, it seems to be gaining momentum. Well said that it gains momentum when Archbishop Desmond Tutu has passed on, but it's better later. You know, mm. it's, it, it's better later than never. And yes. we're excited with how the city has actually embraced it. We're excited how the mayor has really taken it, and we look forward to its implementation. You know, Reverend, it's often said that death unites people. It uh, unites, uh, you know, the multiplicity of views and opinions and, uh, you know, just about everything. And uh, the, the Archbishop himself has been credited for having coined the term God is not a Christian, nor is he a Muslim or a Jew. So to get a sense then that, uh, um, you know, his death will unite the interfaith community and find humanity in each other. In fact, not only his death, but his life and ministry. Because remember, Bishop Desmond Tutu has been a, a bridge builder. And through yes. his actions, through his ministry, he has shown us that we can actually live together, we belong together. And therefore, there is no room in this world for competition, which religion is better than which one. We have no time for that. The time we need to have is to do God's business together. Yes. So in other words, all religions matter. Instead of spending time criticizing each other, we'd rather spend time on the ground and transform the lives of people. So that interfaith, interreligious uh, collaboration is very critical and needed in our world. And it goes beyond just religion. 
even us as races, as ethnic groups, in other ways, if we are to celebrate the legacy of Desmond Tutu, if Desmond Tutu meant anything to us, we would work hard to build bridges, mm -hmm. to, build, to bring healing and reconciliation among all sectors of society, among all God's people in this city, in this community, and in this country and globally. I mean, I'm reading into his preachings, m m most of which are, you know, bordered around the fact that spiritual liberation is not uh, divisible. If any are to be free, all must be free. How would you personally uh, remember the Archbishop, Reverend? I think I would personally remember him in that particular phrase that all must be free. Yes. Because he believed strongly that the rights of all matter. Mm -hmm. You know, that... Um, and we cannot be free when some of us are still oppressed. Um, remember, he advocated for the ordination of women, uh, which was a very interesting uh, practice in the church, that women were not allowed to be ministers, and yet women were the majority in terms of church. Yes. But he was the advocate to make sure that the rights of our mothers and sisters were, were actually upheld and respected. And hence, we celebrate our sisters, our mothers who are clergy, and celebrate that now we even have three women bishops within the Anglican Church of South Africa. What a joy that brings. But also, we need to, we, we need to always celebrate and ensuring that all people of God, every time we work together. But more so, we also need to uphold the rights of the LGBTI plus. Yeah. And that's another avenue that Bishop Archbishop Desmond Tutu advocated. So as long as the rights of others are actually oppressed and trenched upon, we will not be free. As long as people do not have economic freedom, we will not be free. As long as people do not have access to basic services, we are not free. As long as the people of God, they are right, they cannot exercise freely. So if we are to celebrate this legacy again, we need to live in the world where the rights of all matter. Whether I like you, or I dislike you, it doesn't matter. But before God, you matter, and your rights matter. And that is how I will remember him, as somebody who took serious issues of, 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 of equality, issues of the rights of others. And, and most, impo and most importantly, finding humanity general. within each other. Um, Reverend, and unfortunately, we are out of time. But thank you so much for joining us this morning. We do appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Indeed, thank you. That was uh, Johannes, well, Anglican Johannesburg Reverend Kolani Luati, and he joined us more to share the series of events that have been planned this week in commemoration and in celebration of the legacy of Archbishop Desmond Tutu. All right, so this is Morning Live. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Let's take a quick break. We'll be back in a moment.